Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to actually do a comparison video of these new solar generators that are out that have very large battery packs. We're going to con compare the Suwaki uh, G1000 to the Renogy uh, Lycan Powerbox. Um, let me just say that I this was sent to me for free, although I'm going to be a completely honest review. I'm going to hand it away to someone else who will do the testing, long-term testing, reliability testing. The, the Lycan, they gave me a really steep discount, but I did, uh, I paid about half price for what, or a little less than half price, actually. Um, and so I got a really steep discount on it, but we're giving you an honest review, and you're going to see this is really an honest review of problems. We're not, we're not holding back. Um, with me is Brad, a good friend, and he also uh, is my videographer. And you're in the middle of uh, the van build out here with Jamie's van build fest and you're doing a van build. So you're kind of in between without power, and these came at the right time. It really was the right time. Yeah, just when you, you had just sold your van, and away went the solar panels too. Yep, exactly. So this was, it worked out really well. So you've had them both, and been using them both for your um, build, and just living with them mm -hmm. for like 10 days now, not quite that much, but about, Pretty about close. a week. Yeah, about a week, yeah. Uh, so tell us, tell us your reaction. You've been using them intensively. How do they work? Which yeah. one's better? Um, so you know, each unit has its own pros and cons, and so I like each unit for different reasons. Um, I'll start with the Renogy Lycan just because I I received I used that one first, um, and so I like its its capacity. It has a large battery. I was able to run a jigsaw to cut lumber with. And then also I have a fridge, so I was able to run a, fridge, a refrigerator with it, and then also charge my laptop and my iPad and my iPhone. And every, it never really got empty. I never saw below 40%, and I was running the fridge overnight with no solar and um, off the, the 110. So the fridge is a, 20, a 12 volt or a 110. I was running it off the 110 on the Lycan, and I never saw you know below 40%, which was nice. And then by the next day, by about midday, they'd be fully charged up. So uh, let me say too that uh, when I bought the Lycan, you can buy the Lycan as a kit, uh, and so I, uh, I and they gave me this big discount, so I said I'll get the kit, and it came with two 100 pot panels. Why don't you hold one up? So um, and while we're talking about it, let me give you the prices. The price on the um, just the Lycan is uh, twelve oh five, one thousand two hundred five dollars on um, on Amazon, and the Suwaki is one thousand two hundred ninety nine dollars on Amazon. Um, but let me say they're going to have a really good deal coming up on it. And if you go and watch the uh, the review, the unboxing and review of this. You'll see the deal, and and uh, so go go look at that. I'm not going to give you the details again. And so we've done a video on both of these. So go check it there for all the details and the description for links and and the details on the really good deal coming up on the Suwaki. So this had 200 watts. This only had 100 watts. They sent me a 100 watt panel, and so that wasn't a totally fair comparison. So this one had 200 watts. Sorry about that, Brad. Go ahead and. So yeah, it met my needs. The 200 watts uh, of panel worked really well. It's all very well built. Uh, it's all metal frame and it's just, it feels very rugged. You know, I, every night I was putting them inside, every morning I was taking them out and setting them up and it's just a really good build quality. So I like it long-term um, as far as the solar goes. I also had a situation where with this new bus that I bought, uh, the alternator went out and I woke up one morning and my bus batteries were down at nine volts. And I was actually, with these panels and this Lycan, it comes with a jumper pack um, that you can plug in and then you can charge an external battery. And so my bus has uh, two batteries, one in, under the hood, one under the chassis. And I was able to charge them both back up to 12.8. And that kept me going for a couple days until I could replace the alternator. So it's little things like that that being a nomad just make this a great device to have. Um, I will mention a couple issues that I came across with the Lycan. Again, it was a workhorse. It had plenty of power. It ran everything great. But two issues. Uh, first of all, the reason I had to run the fridge on 110 is because this, the cigarette lighter port 
um, on the front, which is the other option with my fridge, you can do cigarette lighter or 110. The cigarette lighter port on this only puts out 11.8 volts. So when I would plug in my fridge, it was giving me a low voltage warning. And then when I got my voltmeter and tested it, that cigarette port on this is no, no good. So that was something that, you know, I just had to adapt and overcome. And then one other issue that I found with this uh, that was pretty concerning was for some reason, when you hit 100% charge on this unit, when you have your panels out in the sun, you hit 100% charge. A couple, it's happened to me twice where it says on the display, it goes from 100% down to 0% and it flashes a low battery warning and it shuts everything off. So in both cases, it shut off my fridge and everything else I was charging. And what you have to do is unplug the panel and then cycle the power. And then it comes back at 100% battery and it works just fine. Um, so it's, it's not, it hasn't crippled the unit, but I would be nervous if I was relying on a fridge or a freezer to keep stuff from spoiling that that could be an issue. And you said you found that uh, there were other people's complained of that in the reviews on Amazon. I did read the Amazon reviews because I was just curious if I'm just finding this, you know, what else? And a couple people just mentioned that it, it does randomly shut off on them. And so it might just be, you know, a software. Or I noticed this has a port on the back where you can hook in an Ethernet cable. So I don't know if you can update it or something, but um, just something to be aware of. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a, uh, one of the big disadvantages to these all-in-one boxes uh, is that if something's broken, then you have to send the whole box back and you're without power. And it could probably be weeks and probably a month or two by the time you box this thing up. Did you save the box? Um, by the time you box this thing up, send it back to Renogy or Suwaki, they repaired it, they send it back, that could be two, three, four, six weeks, and you're without power, you're without the unit the whole time. So this came defective, it, it, and, and the practical result is the, um, the, the cigarette lighter plug doesn't work, and that's really essential. And so uh, if you get it from uh, Amazon and you find out right away well, you can send it back to Amazon because they'll just box it up. You can just box it right back up, ship it back to them. You can keep doing that until you get one that works. But what if you get it and it works for a month or two and then it breaks? You're shipping it. And, man, what a pain in the butt that would be. That's a very good point. It would be wise to immediately test every function, make sure it's 100%. Right. And if not, if you got it from Amazon, and that's a good reason to get it from Amazon, send it right back on their dime. They, you won't yeah. have to pay. And they'll send you a new one. Okay. And you also have been testing the Suwaki. Let's yep. go ahead and uh, I'll let you come over here and explain that. Sure. So this, uh, both units have similar functions, similar ports. You can plug in with MC4 connectors, any type of panel. Um, with the Suwaki, I noticed it's quieter when it's running and the cooling fan is a lot quieter. And it could be because it's a thousand watt inverter versus a 1200, I'm not sure, but this one's pretty quiet. Um, and I do like that it has the USB-C uh, port right on the front. And so you can charge like a MacBook. I can charge my MacBook just directly through that port, which is pretty nice. That's very nice. You're not yeah. having to go to 110 and then back to 12. Um, and then let's see what else. So it ran my Instant Pot. I pretty much survive out here off an Instant Pot. The one I use is 800 watts and this thing ran it no problem. Um, yeah, no problem. The one thing I will mention on the Suwaki that I it's not really a, an issue, but that I'm not too fond of is the display. It never tells you, it never gives you any actual values on voltage or on amps. So when you're charging it, uh, there's a battery meter bar that'll show you from one to five, how, what capacity it's charged, but it never tells you what your amps coming in are. So that's just, for me, I like to mentally know, oh, nine amps or four amps or, you know, where am I at? So you never know what amps are coming in. It won't tell you panel voltage and it certainly won't tell you anything that's plugged in, what's going on with that. So that was just one thing that, you know, would be nice to have, um, but otherwise it, it worked really well and I haven't found any issues with it yet or any reason, any reason not to use it. And I could plug my fridge right into this cigarette lighter and, uh, and that was no issue as well. So one thing I noticed was with this panel, this 100 watt panel, um, when I first received the unit, it seemed to be at about 60% capacity. And so uh, I had the panel, 100 watt panel sitting out in the direct sunlight for about two full days. 
and I was never able to get this unit to uh, be fully charged. And so again, that's why I like to know how many amps or am I getting, you know, so I can kind of gauge, well, maybe it's kind of a hazy day, my panels aren't in a good position. So I'm kind of I'm kind of running blind without knowing those values, but I would have liked to have seen um, this thing charge up faster or have a higher capacity. Um, because my concern is if you're trying to use this to actually continually run a fridge and charge a phone or an iPad, um, I don't know that you would be able to put enough juice back in it to keep up with the amount that you're consuming just based on this single panel. And so my fear would be if you're running a fridge and you got meat and your battery is getting low, you might have to you know, disconnect everything to try to charge it back up. Right, that also raises um, uh, not only the weirdness of this 100 watt panel not being able to get it fully charged, but the, uh, the Renogy can take 300 watts of solar. It has the, um, a big enough MPPT controller that you can run 300 watts of solar into it. The Suwaki, as best I can tell, um, I, I tried to search really hard, but the best I could tell is it will not take more than 150 watts. And that really is too little. Um, you really want to be able to run more than 150 watts to keep this thing going. So I think that's a really big disadvantage. This has a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. This only has a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Well, it's only 200 watt difference, but that might be the difference between being able to run a microwave and not. I think there's a good chance that it would be. Uh, I haven't checked it on mine, but I, I would be concerned about that. Um, but otherwise, the stats are all pretty well the same. It, they're about pretty well equal uh, in, in on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, but they both, you know, had this problem. This one, the 12 volt cigarette lighter plug was broken. And I mean, it doesn't work. It's 11.8, but that is essentially unbroken. Nothing will work on it. And this one never would seem to get the uh, controller, the, get it, the battery full. No, and considering the two, I really like the panels and the way this thing charges. So even though it has some hiccups, I would be more comfortable with this. And those 200 watts did great. Like, I don't think I would even need the extra 100. So I would, I would take this with the 200 watt panels and, and be done with it, just okay. personally. So you're doing your own build and you're gonna have a, a solar system installed Absolutely. on the roof. You're, you're gonna do the whole thing. Yep. You, would, you don't wanna keep one of the, either one of these. But if you had to choose, you said, well, this is just what I gotta have for now, it would be the Renogy. It would be, absolutely. Yep. Okay. I still think it's just a little more robust. Okay, there you go. It's got wheels too, and I think that might make a difference in so, some situations. Uh, little things that add up when you're making these choices. So, well, there you go. There's um, an honest review. Now, the real truth is, this actually has a little smaller battery. It's 89.6 amp hours, and this is 98.6. So this actually is a, a little bigger, uh, a little bigger uh, battery in it. But you're really comparing both of them to a like a Renogy or a Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. And this is going to cost you 900, 950. And, and if you build it all out, it will cost as much or more than these will. But if you have something break, you can just fix it. And you can't do that with these. If something breaks, you send it back. If something breaks on this, you just fix it. Uh, so the uh, 12 volt plug doesn't work, well that's the easiest fix in the world. You can't repair this, you can't get into it. So it goes back to the manufacturer, month, two, more, who knows. Um, so these are your three, and this is your choice. You're, I don't know, you're probably Absolutely. using battle boards. But, Absolutely. Uh, but building your own system is your best choice. And then if you're not gonna build your own system, you would buy the Lycan. I would, based okay. on my, my needs. Okay. Oh, and one more thing I wanna point out right away. These are all LIFEPO4 batteries. You can see that it says that right here, LIFEPO4. They're all LIFEPO4. That is by far the best chemistry. Don't buy one that isn't LIFEPO4. They all offer 2,000 cycles, up to 10 years of life. So, and by far, LIFEPO4 is the safest chemistry of all the lithium chemistries that are commonly available to you and I at, at a reasonable cost. So, um, buy LIFEPO4. All right, Brad, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, folks, there you have it. Uh, honest comparison between the two and an honest choice. We are going to recommend the Lycan, um, the Renogy Lycan. So thanks, Brad. Everyone, I'm, I'm sure you got something out of us. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.